Before we start this video, I just want to say that you need a candles. We just launched our initial run and we sold out, but we have more stock coming this week with the launch of our director series. We have Carpenter with a beautiful crisp fall scent and Craven, which is a nice spiced cranberry. Obviously, this is the director's line, but there's more directors that will be available this week too with a restock of the Big Apple. Go to our Etsy site. We'll have the link in the description below and then a pinned comment. Get ready for the relaunch of more products this week where we ship fast, good prices, and great scents. Now enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your old pal CHH here today, and we have made it to the Rob Zombie portion of the Halloween Crazy Dark Wild, whatever facts, whatever, we were, whatever we've been calling it. This episode is called Disturbing, because some of the stuff that Rob wanted to do originally and was vetoed and changed is just dis downright disturbing. And we'll get to it. I do hope you've enjoyed this series thus far. If you haven't checked out the facts about the previous Halloween films, please go to my channel, which you're probably already here. But here we are, guys. It's time for Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007. So let's get to 10 disturbing facts. Let's go. All right, so let's start out with something a little bit easy. Now, this is something if you're a big fan, you should know this. But if not, you should know that Rob initially, when he reached out to the Weinsteins with his pit, wanted to film two movies back to back. What we see in the film now is pretty much a hodgepodge of the idea he had, but he wanted to do a film completely based off of young Michael Myers as a kid who gets into the downward spiral of his life where he becomes this monster by the end, and the second movie coming out conceivably the next year being adult Michael showing a lot of what we would probably see from the original Halloween film with him stalking Laurie Schroeder etc but the studio probably did not feel that having a film with a young Michael without that coverall and white mask would do well so that was axed and ostensibly what we got was a disjointed version of that with Halloween 2007 with half of the movie being totally different from the second half in a lot of ways. Alright, so the second fact about Rob Zombie's Halloween that I thought was cool was that he used the character of Chief Bromden, I believe is the name, of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as inspiration for Michael's persona when he's inside the sanitarium as an adult. He wanted Michael to almost seem like a lifeless person, a non-threatening person, because in the director's cut we see those two orderlies having their way with a female patient and Michael doesn't do anything when that happens he's not concerned about the well-being of that young girl it's not only until they touch Michael's masks that he gets up and pounces that was deliberate and at first Rob was trying to give the impression to the audience that Michael is lifeless almost he's an invalid in there he's not concerned about anything and he's not threatening but, as we would find out, that wouldn't be the case, and those two guys would kind of get what they deserve, quite frankly. Okay, so the third fact about Rob Zombie's Halloween, I thought this was very interesting. We know that the Weinsteins would have notes all the time for Rob Zombie with his film, but I thought it was very interesting that Rob stated that Malik Akkad from day one was extremely, extremely in favor of Rob making this movie his own. Remember, for uh, the situation... Uh, Mustafa had passed away a few years prior in a horrible terrorist attack where Mustafa and his daughter passed away and Malik was not there and he became the flag bearer for the Halloween franchise and I think Malik was uh, ready to try some fresh stuff. He Nobody liked Resurrection, the perception was bad so he was in favor of Rob taking the movie and doing what he wanted to do with it and going in directions he thought was the right way to do. Uh, but Weinstein's were giving notes on a daily basis and trying to basically change every single thing every single day with Rob. So, again, that, that tug of war between Malik and the Weinstein's was still there in 2007 when making Rob's movie. The Weinstein's always had their ideas of what they wanted to do and highly involved, sometimes good and bad. We saw what the Weinstein's were like on the beginning of Scream. They thought it looked bad and then they were completely wrong. So it's always hard to say if the Weinsteins are on the right or wrong side of the fence on these situations with scenes and what they needed to do with these movies. But interestingly enough, Malik was supported from day one. Okay, so we talked about disturbing facts. How about this? In the very initial draft of Rob Zombie's Halloween, Rob had young Michael under a blanket fort in his bedroom with a clown mask on, brace yourself, 
pleasuring him to an animal torture scrapbook. This is kind of hinted that he's really into this. Obviously, we see him killing the mouse, and then we see some of the pictures and stuff that they find at the locker at school, I believe, at Memory Serve. This is going really deep into it, and I am not surprised at all that they not only said, hey, we probably shouldn't do this, they probably just flat out axed it and said, you're not filming that. There's no way we could put that on screen. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Would you like to have seen that at the beginning of Rob Zombie's Halloween? Let me know. Another interesting thing was the initial draft that Rob made, the scene where Sherry's character goes to work as a stripper that night, while Michael's at the house where he kills his, I don't know if stepdad is the correct term for you know, that character. The original draft, Rob Zombie actually had Sherry's character taking Michael to school at a, to a school function because she didn't want to leave Michael at the house with the drunk stepdad and all that. And then Michael would ostensibly get out of that school function, sneak his way back home, and then kill his sister and stepdad. So, I don't know why that was changed. Maybe it was time and budget, but that was the initial thing that, that Rob had in mind. So the sixth fact about Rob Zombie's Halloween was this, and I thought this was a cool thing to mention. So, Rob really loves the look and style of documentary style stuff, voyeuristic type stuff. So, a lot of those old documentaries he loves, and he loves obviously stuff like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, he had his DP shoot the movie, a lot of the movie, the same way he shot The Devil's Rejects, which was the same guy, handheld. And he wanted to get that voyeuristic feel. And I never really thought about that until I was reading about it in this book. But yeah, Halloween does kind of have a voyeuristic feel with the handheld camera. And you never really feel like you're truly behind the point of view of one character. Especially with the, the mixture of timelines and things. So the movie does kind of have a voyeuristic feel. Um, and that's something I can applaud. I always like that style of filmmaking, quite frankly. Okay, so this fact was bizarre, and I think I have a guess of why we're never going to see this. So when Rob got the green light for making Halloween, he had that same DP that worked on the movie start filming a documentary of Rob's tour that he was on because at the time, he told his DP, I'm not touring ever again after this. Now, what I think happened was this. I think Rob thought that because he was getting into the movie business with big production studios and, you know, big studio environments, because before it really wasn't like that as much. Granted, the first one was shot by Universal, but he claimed nobody even bothered him. Devil's Rejects, same thing. It was modest. Nobody bothered him. He was in complete control, but this was the big time. I think he thought that his movie career was going to keep him so busy and that he was so excited to get to this part of his his career that he would be done with touring. But I think that the Halloween experience ended up being really bad for him and not what he wanted in terms of you know, having zero creative control and working with the Weinsteins and how difficult they were to work with. Whether you like the movie or not, that's, that's not really up for debate. It was clear that the Weinsteins were trying to tug and pull every scene that Rob had in mind with this movie. That I think that he decided, no, I'm certainly not going to stop touring and doing music. So I think that's why that documentary that was filmed will probably never see the light of day. Okay, so the eighth fact is, again, going back to the early drafts that Rob had in mind, he had Ronnie, the stepdad, if you will, being even crueler to Michael, even threatening to, like, beat the piss out of him in the beginning of the film. Uh, why some of that was taken out, I don't know. I always found that stuff so over the top, it was hysterical, so I would have liked to have seen more of Ronnie being really mean to Michael. But uh, some of that stuff got chopped down and taken out a little bit, so... But there was a line where... I think he said, once this hand heals up, boy, I'm going to beat this piss or slap the hell out of you with it or something like that. But that was taken out. And then, you know, it trimmed down to what we got, which trimmed down is a weird way to say it because some of the most vile dialogue is, is still in the scenes. But yeah, just know that it was even crueler. Okay, so the ninth fact about Rob Zombie's Halloween. Now, I thought this was really interesting. The original draft, again, had Myers becoming more of a dissociative human in a sense. There was a part in the psychiatric ward where Loomis is having these sessions with Michael where Michael says I've killed the boy named Michael Myers in my head and it almost seemed like some kind of spirit or evil entity had taken over Michael Myers and this was no longer him talking that would have been interesting maybe this almost possessive evil entity taking over Michael to where the human element of him had been eaten up by this evil germ and now this evil entity was taking over this kid but that didn't get into the film and now we see more of this perfect storm of a horrible life environment taking this 
person and making them as dark as humanly possible. That was something I would have liked to have seen state, quite frankly. Okay, so I saved the most disgusting for last, or the most brutal for last, really. The tenth crazy fact, again, the initial draft of Rob Zombie's Halloween. The scene where Michael kills the spy kid's boy in the woods after he was being picked on in the bathroom. Well, here's the original version of that. In the original version, Zombie had a young Michael Myers lure a nine-year-old girl into those woods where he would have beaten her to death and then urinate on the body after he was done and killed her. I, I mean, that is really intense. And there's no denying that that would have gotten an NC-17 by every stretch of the imagination. I was surprised to hear how sadistically cruel some of the stuff was that Rob had. Obviously, we know Rob is a horror fanatic and he likes to push the envelope. But I don't know. I mean, reading it, it was insane. So, needless to say, that was vehemently axed by all accounts. I wouldn't even doubt if Malik was like, yeah, I don't think we can do that, Rob. But yeah, so I saved the worst for last in a sense. So there are ten disturbing facts about Rob Zombie's Halloween. A pretty good episode. I think we got some good information here. It was hard to find a lot of juicy, juicy stuff in terms of, oh my god, this almost happened, but some of the stuff I had to hold off and save because Taking Shape 2, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff and scripts and movies that uh, we've heard legends about, but uh, less good information that we'll save. So I picked what I thought would be good for this episode and stuff that even big fans may not have heard before. So if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you guys are enjoying this series and if you want me to continue this with maybe other stuff like the Freddy vs. Jason story and all the crazy scripts that that didn't get used for that movie. I have a book on that too. But uh, again, guys, thank you. Have a great Monday and we'll see you guys soon with... Crazy facts about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, and music, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month.